Welcome again to Inside the Line, Real Stories by Real Cops. I'm Dave Radigan. This is uh, Dale Lawrence across the table from me. Uh, we really appreciate everybody listening, and I just want to plug a couple of things. InsideTheLine.org is our website. Uh, Real Stories by Real Cops at gmail.com is our email address. We'd love to hear from you if you have an idea, if you have a comment. Oh, and if you like us, share us, because we're trying to build our audience so that we can become rich. This one, good cop or bad cop? And of course, it's tough to diagnose something like this for me. It's tough to analyze from this distance, but a lot of people have no trouble. And uh, I know, Dale, you're one of them. You can just look at these guys and you can hear what's going on and you can say, no. I mean, we can tell by in a certain... A Sometimes, certain and we're going to get into a few stories or news stories that are very recent that from a cop's perspective... It might be 50-50. It looks like it's a good scenario, but then again, oh, it also looks like it's a bad scenario. But I think from the layman term, from just the average person on the street, initially their instinct would say, oh, that's a bad cop. That's a bad shoot. He should have done something completely different. But we're going to try to get into that and kind of smooth it out. And some people, frankly, they second guess and they're morons. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the morons. Uh, I mean, I see some of these things and I think, well, you know, they, they shot somebody who had fought them off and then was going to their car and reaching into their glove you know, compartment or be- between their seats and they sh- and they shot them. It, it, again, it goes to this idea that we all have as Americans that a cop should be able to shoot your gun hand from uh, 50, uh, 50 yards away, should be able to shoot you in the gun hand and not hurt anybody. And uh, it's all movies and it's all nonsense. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about this one because this one I think is let's let's talk. This about is right this. off the cuff. We yeah. had another one we were going to start with, but as I was perusing the almighty Google, I came up with this one. And, and in Alabama, it was last week. In what part of Alabama are we at here? Well, how about Alabama, the Walnut Park Elementary School in Gadsden? The school resource officer got a frantic call from the principal yep. inside the school. There was a summer school going on. There was around 34 kids Somebody in the school. Somebody was trying to get in the school. Someone was trying to get into some motor vehicles in the parking lot. And obviously someone observed that and they called the police department. They called the school resource officer. Then the person made their way toward the school and... They were trying to get in the school. Were they trying to kick the door in? Were they trying to punch the door in? Were they trying to break it in with it's a, a rock? It's a really strange case. There's not a lot of info on it just was it yet. A, was it a distraught parent trying to <laughs> My find... My kid should have got all A's and he got all D's. Oh, how about this? <laughs> I lost something important for work and I think my kid brought it home with him. Yeah. Or my, or, you know, maybe it's my ex-wife who's a teacher at the school. Who knows? Yeah, this is a kind of scenario where you look at it and I'm, I was reading it. I was like, yeah, that, that's a good job. The guy might have been trying to do harm to the kids. It never said he had a weapon. So I don't know where that stands right now. But the school resource officer confronted this individual. There was some sort of a tussle. Did he go for his gun? Did he go for his taser? It hasn't really said. All there was, there was a tussle. There was a fight. There was an altercation. And the school resource officer shot and killed this individual. Yep. Everyone's clapping. Everyone's saying, great job. And you know something? If he was armed, if his intent was to get into the school and shoot kids, absolutely great job. Hero of the day. But we don't know that yet. And it kind of goes to a possible scenario where any person who is causing a disturbance in front of a school, elementary school, and they're not armed, it almost gives the cop carte blanche to just start picking people off. And the public will support that. When in comparison, they don't necessarily support other scenarios where cops use deadly force. And we're going to get into that a little bit later. I'm in, in situations where I'm looking through my own car. And people thought that I was looking, you know, oh, that seems suspicious. Yep, that doesn't seem absolutely. suspicious. I got a messy car and I'm looking for something because I lost something. Yeah, so a lot of times people may see you doing something in a car, right. not know that it's your car, right. and call in some sort of a disturbance and the cops show up with wrong information. Right. So this whole, and then, before we kind of nail this one down, you have to get more information. This is one of those, and this is one of those cases where the next day or the day after that, they're going to find out. And they're very likely to find out that maybe that there's something fishy about this case. And maybe- We want to look at it from both angles. Right. Yes, if the cop 
stop some sort of a disturbed individual from yep. going into the school. Yeah, all, by all means. All power to them. But there's always that but in right. law enforcement. Yeah, there is always that but. And, you know, was this guy unarmed? Was he was he unarmed and was he was he jacked up and, and out of his mind? And On crystal meth? Yeah. We are down south. That is Alabama. It's kind of the meth capital of the world. <laughs> it, could, it could be. I mean, was it somebody who was in a rage because of this or because of that? Or was it somebody who was distraught because of some other emergency in their lives that you and I might deal with in a different way, maybe would be a little bit more calm than this than this person was. It's the story where when you first hear it, it seems cut and dry, and then you really look at it and you say, something else might come the next day. Yeah, so we're going to, before we get any more into it, we're just going to leave it at that, something for you to ponder. But we are going to get into one right now, yeah, and like it's going to be the Uvalde, yeah. Texas police chief, Pete Arandondo, Finally breaks his silence. The story that just won't die. Horrible. 19 kids uh, murdered at the Robb Elementary School. Two adults, two, two, two teachers. Ad- two, two adults, two school teachers, and the and the bad guy. The really strange police response where they went in, they got shot at, so they stopped going in, and they let the shooter alone for about an hour and the question and one kid i think they they determined bled out um there were there were there was still some gun gunshots when they were in the yeah, hallway there were gunshots in the hallway i don't think it's been determined that they shot anybody else after the first 3 minutes but whatever the Uvalde police department is getting so much crap and there's so much stuff that's gone on with conflicting stories and I have around accounts. six points of interest. The six, then I'm, the I'm going to ask Dave. The six, the six officers? Is that what you the mean? Six, well, no, there's like, <laughs> I have six bullet points. Then I'm going to ask you, Dave, right. was it a good cop or a bad cop that day? What and, is this guy? A good cop or a bad cop? All right. First and, one is, he was the chief of six, hold on now, six police officers. Yep. I don't know why they needed a chief, but he's the chief of six guys. It's a small town. And that only tells me that just right off the bat that I don't know what his experience was, but I can't even for the life of me understand why you would need a chief for six guys. But that's really not the point here. But let's go to the other one. Okay. They waited in the hallway over an hour yep. knowing that kids were injured. There were 911 calls going to the 911 dispatch center. And this and at chief- least one, one kid who was injured bled out and died. Yes. Died. And this chief's initial response the other day was, well, I didn't have my radio on me because yeah. I wanted both of my hands free. And I went through some of the photos out there in regards to what type of radios these cops use. They have a duty belt. They have a gun. They got handcuffs. They have extra magazines. They have tasers. And they have a radio that gets clipped to their pouch. And on that radio- is kind of an elastic type wood that goes up to your shoulder or goes up to your chest. Yep. And you can just press a button and talk into it. So you don't have to have your hands on a radio. So that right there tells me that he must think that cops aren't looking at this saying, you don't have to hold your radio in your hand. This isn't Mayberry well, the other 1940 thing, anymore. The other thing that I've heard, a different must have been a different story, was saying that he didn't want to bring the radio into the active shooter situation because somebody would hear the radio. The shooter would hear the radio and shoot it. Well, I, I think he already looked out the window and probably saw 200 cops out there. Yes, strategic point right there that you just made, Dave. And we go into calls, domestic calls, or places where we don't want people to hear us. We turn our radio down and we use kind of hand signals. But I think in that situation, this kid knew. He knew there was 50 cops right there. He knew there was guys in the hallway. This guy's kind of deflecting responsibility. And his other point was, he made the statement, I wasn't in charge. Yeah. Well, you are in charge because you're the chief of the school. And unless someone in a higher authority, maybe a federal agency. How about the chief? Police chief of that entire town. Unless they say to you, hey, we're going to work together, but I'm going to call the shots. Right. So people would assume that if you're the school resource officer chief, you're in charge. You should know that school better than anyone. You should know all the entry and access points. And I'll tell you the other part of this. They were trained. They were all trained. trained. And and this is... You're going against the 18-year-old nitwit. All you have to do is have some balls, be able to shoot. Yes, it would be nice to have a ballistic shield. Yes, it would be nice to have a ballistic helmet on. It would be nice to have a lot of things. Yeah. However, you're going against an 18-year-old maniac, and we talked about it a few weeks ago, you attack force with more force. Here's, here's the thing that I love. Your next point <laughs> your next point about cops, teachers, politicians. Military leaders. <laughs> Everyone wants to deflect responsibility. Look what happened in Afghanistan. I didn't tell them to leave all the guns. P. 
people love to deflect responsibility, and cops can be good at it sometimes. I'll go. I'll go. Politicians one, can, can even be better. I'll go one step further. People who climb the ladder, there's a reason they climb the ladder. And a lot of them are really tough to deal with because they don't want to take any responsibility. They don't want any splashback on them. Let's put it this way. If he's in charge or he's not in charge, they just had the training within the past six months, I believe. Yes. He should know. He and should they, know. They were saying we didn't have a key. This is but the you reason. Can, you can grab a shotgun and you can blow a, you can breach yeah, a door open absurd. with a shotgun. That's absurd. The idea, well, you know how they finally opened it, right? Uh, the, a key, the yeah. janitor. They found the Jimmy janitor. the janitor who was probably boozing in the back on some tequila, <laughs> hammering some tequila down I'm there gonna, in Texas. I'm going to assume, <laughs> I'm going to assume the janitor uh, was probably doing his best and was uh, not a hero in this because there's no hero in this. Let's, uh, let's assume that the janitor was doing his job and, uh, the fact that uh, what was it? The border patrol came in, right? Yes, well, absolutely. Border patrol came in. Boom! They they assembled. They took care of business. They took care of business. They took care of it. How about this idea? Bill Maher on HBO had a theory about cops. He goes, you know, what about you know? This is the, this is an example of the cops feeling that they're put upon and they're not being thanked enough. They're not being appreciated, so they didn't do their job. In my mind, that's crap because again, no one's going to not do their job when kids are involved unless they're poorly trained, scared disorganized. Now, All those three sound like rational reasons why they didn't do what they right. should have done in Texas. And the only way that I could say that it would be because they're, maybe they didn't take the training seriously enough. Yeah, that's somebody, possible. Somebody clearly in, in command, whether it's this guy or whether or not police chief in town, or maybe there was somebody else who was designated well, you, to be you in know charge. The worst how, thing how, about, do you, how do you not know who's in charge? In a the worst thing about this scenario, and I can see, you probably had, you had chief of the school, you had the chief of the town. You had some guy, whoever he was, in the border patrol. There was probably some captain or lieutenant from the border patrol. There could have been a state patrol officer, whatever they call him down in Texas, the mounted police, whatever they call him yeah. down there. There was probably four or five agencies from local, state to federal. And it's one of those scenarios where everyone could have been in charge. But with those scenarios, you get too many chiefs. No one takes command, and then at the end, you can't blame anyone because everyone right. starts pointing fingers at everyone else. Right. That's where they're at. In the, in the article that I read prior to this coming on, now there's a potential cover-up because that town, that police department is refusing to give any information about anything that went on that day to include some background information on Pete Arandondo. I'm not saying he has some sort of a track record, but that's what they're trying to look at his history as a cop. Well, here's the thing. I look at the school school chief's position. In my experience, most executive officers from where I've been, they seem like, okay, they, they, they're the people who should be in charge. Every so often I come across a cop when I was a reporter and I yep. would come across a cop every so often and I would think, how the hell did this guy get to this position? Well, I used to say that all the time. Guys say it all the time about certain leadership positions. Yeah, and it's it's either the brown nosers or they've got something on someone, whatever. And I think some of these guys, I mean, there have been some guys I think, well, they, they promoted them for some reason, and now they're putting them to the side where he won't hurt anybody. And what, and what the background information on that is people say under the cuff— I hope they're never in charge of a situation where they need a good leader because this guy will fuck it up. And that's probably, that's probably what they said about this guy. Right. And unfortunately, he was in a situation where he was incompetent and had poor leadership skills, poor tactical skills, everything else in between. And he was put in a situation and he did what everyone knew he was going to do. Fuck it up. Maybe. Maybe. Well, That's let me ask you this question, Dave. Is he a good cop or a bad cop? This is an easy one. I'm going to, yeah, this is easy. Yeah, this, let's put it this way. <laughs> let's put it this way. This was a failure in execution by the Evaldi Police Department, whose fault it was. It, it does seem to be landed on this guy's shoulders, but, you know, who knows? Who knows? I don't think you'll ever know because in law enforcement, in, in any agency, even in the newspaper business and sports, whatever the case may be, People have inside information, and unless you're on the inside, unless you're in that little subculture, you will never get the information because it's very rarely that anyone within that subculture will divulge what actually happened because they know the liability might get kicked on to them, and they're going to be brought into a lawsuit, they're going to get fired. Worst case scenario, they'll go to jail for being completely incompetent, reckless behavior. Yeah, and I'll go one, I'll go one step more. Sometimes even the people... Or on the inside, who think they know, 
they they don't always know the whole story. I mean, it's amazing. You know, we talk about conspiracy theories, which are everyone loves a conspiracy theory. A conspiracy theory could simply be you and I are both cops. We see something. We decide we want to cover the body, move the body a couple of yeah, feet move, over. Move, to, move it a few feet over to the roadway to the other community. Go ahead, right. Dave. It, it's, 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 <laughs> it's potentially there's all those little things that are conspiracy. And in a case like this, it's an indictment of the department. So whoever's in charge of the department should take the heat. It's a it's an indictment and of the, the parents of the and, the, and the families and the victims of those kids. They deserve some answers, but right. I unfortunately don't think no. they'll ever get them. I don't think they'll. I think they'll. The, from the macro sense, the the department fucked up, and from a micro sense, whose fault it is exactly it doesn't look good for the school police chief. If nothing else, it seems. Not like- only is he the school police chief, but he was just elected as a city councilor. If I, if that was me, I'd either put a bullet in my head because I'd be so depressed over yeah. how bad I fucked up, yeah. or I would just leave the town. I would just leave the town, go somewhere else. I don't know where he can go, but just go somewhere. I wouldn't even be able to show my face in a town like that. If in fact what's being written about him is true, you know something. If it's not true, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's pretty, pretty bad, bad too. <laughs> I get it. Well, we got a good one coming up, though, Dave. Oh, yeah. Oh, good one. Now, now we turn into a happier thing in domestic violence. Uh, I love this one. I love this one. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is going to be Chicago, South Suburban Flossmoor. The cops in that area, Cook County, their district attorney, Kim Fox, and she's in the news for her, one, lack of support for the law enforcement in Chicago, but most importantly, for her kind of, I don't know, rogue, renegade laws or inability to even prosecute. There's two big cases that happened in the last year or two. There was a big gang shooting where a couple of gang bangers killed each other. She called it mutual combat and let everyone go. There was a yeah, elderly that. gentleman walking down the street and a guy got out of his car and killed him. And she let it go and said, oh, there was some sort of a disturbance prior to that down the street. So it was another mutual combat. And people couldn't believe how she handled things. Now, let's go. How, how old, by the way, how old is she? I have no idea. She doesn't look goes, that old. It goes to the next thing, which, which we're going to come up. Come oh, up yes. To. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think she's in her 40s. I got I to gotta look it up. Yeah, why don't you look it up, and I'll kind of give give our listeners what's going on. So they received a, a 911 call from her husband that there was some sort of a domestic. And this was June 4th at around 10 p.m. The cop shows up, is greeted by the husband, and he said, me and my wife, and my wife is Kim Fox, you probably know her, We had a disagreement over a PlayStation controller, a PlayStation controller, (laughs) a video game controller, and the TV controller. There was some sort of a disturbance. He wanted to leave. She wouldn't let him leave. She allegedly pushed him against the wall in the bathroom. But ultimately, where the crime occurred, she slapped him across the face. That's the scenario the cop was given. Yep. Yes. I love this part. I love this part. The police officer shined a flashlight on his face and didn't see any finger marks. Well, Kim Fox is African-American. I'm assuming I could be wrong you that know. the husband is African-American. I've gone to domestics where people have said I was slapped in the face. And if they're like you, Dave, yep. a pasty white Irishman, yep. if you get slapped in the face, oh. more likely than not, there's going to be a red mark for... Maybe a half hour. Probably bruising. And probably, probably bruising. bruising. I'll probably a have black to to, eye, a little head trauma I'd from have, a slap day because we know you're to, feeble. I'd have, I'd have to go to outpatient. <laughs> I'd have to go to outpatient. So you could see that, but in certain races, Middle Eastern, Hispanic, African American, you're not going to necessarily see a slap mark on their face. You'll see a punch if there's blood. So the officer deferred to he didn't see any bruising or any sign of a slap so he decided not to arrest her okay and he again we don't know we don't know what color the the, the yeah, we was. don't so i should probably look it up but we're right in the middle of the groove here yeah yeah <laughs> anyway the point of the matter is first of all i think we agree that you never fight 
that much over a game control. Not a game control. How old? You're an adult. I can see if she found some naked pictures on his phone. I could see that. I could see the remote. If there's a ball game on. Oh, oh yeah. She's taking the remote. Yeah, she like, wants to watch a gardening show and he wants to watch uh, the Chicago White Sox, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, maybe not the White Sox. <laughs> are, they, are they horrible? <laughs> no, I, actually, I don't know. I don't know. They, they play the Red Sox. They look like world beaters, but everybody does when they play the Red Sox. Anyway, the um, this is you know it's 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 fascinating. I mean, they call the guy calls on her. He says, then she slapped him. In Massachusetts, let me give you the Massachusetts law, Dave. Yeah. A Massachusetts police officer goes to that exact call, and the victim is the husband. He says she slapped him. Once he says that in Massachusetts, and there's 29 out of the 50 states have a mandatory arrest, meaning as a police officer, you go to a domestic, and there is some form of physical assault, a punch, a slap, a kick. Someone picks up the game controller and rifles it at another person and hits him in the head. Those are all mandatory arrest offenses in Massachusetts. That's an easy call for a cop. You arrest her and you walk out the door, have a good day. Yeah. Regardless of what he says, I don't want to arrest it. The minute he says he was assaulted, that officer or officers is mandated by the state law of Massachusetts to arrest. In Chicago, guess what? It's a discretionary arrest. It's the officer's discretion at that moment in time whether or not he or she wants to arrest the alleged perpetrator. And he chose not to. I'm going to go the other. I'm going to go just take another step. He's married to the district attorney. Their fates are intertwined as a married couple. <laughs> he got to know how bad and how horrible this is going to look yep. for her. She slapped him. He could be a little sissy boy, and she's been abusing him for a long time. Okay, that listen, a little that sissy could, boy that, getting beat up by his wife. That could be. <laughs> that could be. And we know that that's why a lot of men don't don't claim it because they they don't want to be saying, "Well, my wife did this." But of course, if they turned, if they responded, if they were strong enough to respond, then all of a sudden, you know, down comes the world on them. But the point of the matter is, this she she loses she she gets mad at him. She whips out his controller. Who knows what he's doing? I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess that he's probably, he's a grown man playing video games. All right. He's a grown man playing video games. And I, and I. This Call was, of Duty, baby. You know something? I get it. It's addictive. I get that it's addictive. But you know something? He's a grown man. He's playing video games. She loses her, 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 her shit. She whips the video, the, the controller down. TV controller again. Worse, much worse. <laughs> but then she, then whatever he says to her, she slaps him across the face. For this, don't he's even call, call the police. Don't even call. That's what I'm saying. I mean, if he's been beat, we're busy. By, They're in he, Chicago, yeah. baby. If he's been, seven murders that weekend. So what, what do you think? You think it's a good cop call or a bad cop call? Because I have my opinion on it. I think that it's a good cop call because the cop realizes that she's a district attorney and a mandatory arrest would probably not be a good thing. If this is a single isolated incident or if she sometimes loses her temper with him. She looks pretty evil. If you look at her and you hear her in press conferences. You know something? I know. evil. I, she's an evil street rat. <laughs> okay. Maybe <laughs> well, she, let me give you my opinion, Dave. I think she, I, here's my case. <laughs> I think the guy... Use discretion. I think if he arrests her, he winds up losing his job or having his career ruined ruined because she's got that kind of power over him. Yeah, you know what my, my opinion on this is? He's a good cop in one sense in that he had the discretion to not arrest. Yeah. It was probably slap is kind of minor. Yeah. And if everyone was in agreement, What would you do in that case? That scenario, first thing, what I, w- I wouldn't put it in a police report. If someone said I was slapped, I wouldn't put it in a police report because once I do that, I have to arrest. Okay. So if, if, I, you're, if, if you're in Chicago, the laws are different. Do you put it in? in? If I'm in Chicago, I'm, let me look at it this way. If I'm in Chicago and she's not the district attorney, and yeah. there's no history of domestic violence there, then I'm probably going to give him a pass. But knowing that she's a district attorney, yeah. knowing that she hates all the cops, he's a bad cop because every other cop is probably looking at him and saying... What a nitwit. You had the chance to get her out of office. Uh, She's been fucking with us for the last two years. She's letting every criminal and gangbanger out in the streets, killing people, putting cops' lives in danger. You had her in your sights. You could have arrested her. I know it was a chicken shit call, a little slap. I understand it was really borderline, but you had her dead to rights and you didn't do it. I'm telling you right now, most cops in that jurisdiction are probably saying to that guy, what the fuck's wrong with you? Should have just arrested her. Yeah. You would have gone to her office. Everything would have been nice. 
All 50 right. 50 on that one. Let, let me suggest this one then. Two wrongs don't make a right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go to the next one. I see a little of you in this one, Dave. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> this is Rockville, Maryland. And after the whole defund the police movement and oh, putting this the, is another weird one. Yeah, putting social workers in, 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 in police stations and all that other stuff. The Rockville, Maryland Police Department hired a civilian police chief, Carmen Facilio, or something to that effect. Mm-hmm. And he was the uh he was the chief of their community policing unit, and he was suspended. He went on a call. Well, wait, wait, wait. Okay, they, yes. They don't know that this is why. I, I read the story, well, and I thought they don't have their facts. Okay, you're right. You're right, Dave. Highly speculative story. As a reporter, Dave, you're yeah. right. Only go with the facts, my friend. Only go with the facts. Right. However, what this article alluded to... According was, to this article. <laughs> yes. According to this article, okay. that police chief Basilio, or maybe I'll get it right, it's one of those tough names. One of those Italian names, I'm thinking. He went to a call at a assisted living program where they have nurses, where they have doctors, where they have people who are highly trained yes. in the medical field. Yes. For whatever reason, he responded to the call. They were providing CPR on a patient. He intervened, told everyone to stop because he was going to jump in and do it. And allegedly, during maybe, that, maybe, maybe, is maybe what, <laughs> he might have, might have asked someone to take a picture of him doing right. it. Right. And the fact that they're saying might have in the story, you know, that's... Dave, I'm going to tell you. As a journalist, I would not have written... Written that some, story, yeah. Well, I wouldn't have written it that way. I wouldn't have said, you know, the, there was some speculation that he, he might have somebody... I'd have, I'd have to get somebody to say it, or I'd just have to go without it, because that's why this guy jumped in. I know what you're saying. The, the picture they're painting here is that this guy was grandstanding, and he wanted to do the CPR, and he wanted somebody to get a picture of it so that he could get a little press for himself. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, cops, in comparison to... EMTs, paramedics, firemen, and nurses, meaning they had nurses in this assisted living program. Yeah. The cop, unless the cop is a paramedic or an EMT, a police officer is the lowest level yeah. of medical care provider. So you wouldn't necessarily do that unless there was a lot of victims and they needed a lot of assistance right. and someone was tired. You're, you're the fifth you would option. intervene. You're, you're the fifth option for well, the reason. Especially in a medical facility, you yep. are. And I'll tell you there's something else. Let's assume this guy had CPR training. Uh, he had CPR training. Absolutely, oh, he, did. he did. Okay. So that's basic training for anyone. Yeah. All right. So he's at least able to do to do it. But yeah, he's the fifth option. Or the sixth. He's the sixth option. Absolutely. There's highly trained people in there that were doing what they were supposed to be doing. He was just grandstanding. He's like, he's that kind of that nitwit. He's that nitwit that wants to be a fireman and he shows up at all the fires. He's that nitwit that wants to be involved as a police officer. And so he's in the community watch program and he's arresting 12-year-old kids being loud at at the park at 10 o'clock at night. There are people out there that are nuisance people that get involved in law enforcement behavior and they fuck things up. That's what this guy is. He's a civilian. Someone appointed him as a chief and he's a nitwit. That seems... He's a complete nitwit. Based on this story... Based on this story, which is not the best story, not the best source story in the world. You're talking about cover-ups? The guy's been on the on the job less than a year or a year. It's June 2021 that he was he was uh, given the job. What kind of a background did he have in the first place? I understand that you would hire a community. I, I get it that you'd hire a civilian for his community. buddy hired him. You think it's probably a hundred and ten thousand, hundred twenty thousand dollar a year job. His buddy hi- hired him. Let me give you the inside. I'm gonna give you the inside <laughs> subculture of that police department. You get it's hired. Yep. There was a whole bunch of other cops who were probably been on for 20 or 30 years. Captains, lieutenants, guys that spent their whole life in that community. Yep. They hired this guy. No law enforcement experience. Was he even from the community? I don't know. So now they're all pissed off. Yep. And they were just laying in wait. They were waiting for this guy to fuck up. They were waiting for him to do something stupid. And they knew that he would because cops are very perceptive at identifying nitwits in their ranks and focusing on them and letting them know, listen, we all know you're a nitwit. Sit in the corner, collect your paycheck, don't tell us what to do or how to do it. We're cops. We know what we're doing. You just shut up. I know your buddy is the mayor of the town and he hired you and this guy didn't listen. He went out there, he probably pissed off all these salty veterans and they just waited and this incident happened 
And some cop called his buddy at the newspaper and says, you can't use my name, but I got 40 guys who right. will tell you the same story at what this guy did. And that's where that came from. Now, is it going to be totally rebuked? It didn't even happen. I can almost guarantee you that happened because like cops were laying in wait for this guy because they wanted him out of there. I tell you this, it's funny because you know, we talk about buck passing and, and deflecting blame. Here's a case. It's a personnel issue. You've suspended a guy. It's a personnel issue. We can't say anything legally because it's a personnel issue. So you can cover it up in that way. Yeah, you, that, may, that may never come out, especially if no but, one was harmed. So, what do you think? Good cop, bad cop, or is there another category <laughs> we're gonna? Is there another category we're gonna go into here? I think we could go screwed cop at this point, but he's not a cop. So, but yeah, it sounds like there were two possibilities for this. Maybe he was a community advocate. Maybe he was somebody who was really good at budgets. Maybe he was somebody who was a city councilor who had good rep, and maybe, or maybe he was a crony of somebody and he Absolutely. got this job. Yeah. On, a, on a positive note, Dave, yep. I was in touch with, it's called Five Star Senior Living. <laughs> it's in Chevy Chase, Maryland. <laughs> and we got you set up. Five Star? Yeah, we got you set up <laughs> for an appointment next week. Me, you, we're going to head to Maryland. We're going to go there and see if we can get you a nice room. Probably in the Alzheimer's ward. Excellent. Yeah, you, you'll, you'll love it there. They got bingo night, Dave. They got free food, all sorts of stuff. You know why I wouldn't want to date women from the Alzheimer's ward? Why? You know why? Because they would never keep their plans. You just tell them, it's like, I will come, I will stroll down at seven o'clock for the movie. And who knows? Yeah. Who she knows? told me I could have sex with her. Then an hour later, she's claiming you, you violated see, her see, day. Why did, see, why did you make it? Why did you make it dirty? Why did you make it filthy? I don't know. What's the next one here? Uh, this, this is this is a is tough that, one. Is this our last one? This is our last oh, one. This is a horrible one. This is bad. This is weird. I yeah. mean, again, it's weird and it's bad. Okay. Go so ahead. it's Grand Rapids, Michigan, or just the fact that it's Grand Rapids, Michigan is going to tell you because that's pretty much a hellhole. Police officer Christopher Shore, S-C-H-U-R-R, held on 100000 cash bail for killing slash murder of Patrick Lyoa, L-Y-O-Y-A. Lyoa. Lyoa. I think, Lioa. I think, I think it's a guess. All right. Well, you're, you're a lot smarter than me because you're actually a college professor. I get a lot of, I get a lot of unusual <laughs> names. Patrick Lioa. So what happened on April 4th? Lioa was driving a car, allegedly... <laughs> allegedly, he had some warrants. Allegedly, the car was unregistered. Allegedly, it might have even been stolen. Why is this alleged? He hasn't gone to trial yet. They have to present the evidence from the registry that it actually was unregistered and all that other stuff. Right. It but, has but to be cop, certified. The them over. They... You, can, you can pull it over if the registry of motor vehicles computer says that he has warrants, that the car is either stolen or unregistered. You can pull him over. One of what happens a lot of times, Dave, you pull a car over. This is a little bit off, off the subject here for a second. You pull a car over, it says it's unregistered, but it's not. There was a mistake. Right. So it, ultimately, it has to be certified that it actually was unregistered. But that's the premise of the stop. The cop pulls them over on those premises. There's, some, there's an argument. There's a disagreement. The guy's out of the car. He's uncooperative. He's allegedly highly intoxicated. He takes off from the officer. He runs. The officer pursues him. The officer attempts to tase him yep. on a few occasions. The taser doesn't work because the little barbs, the little prickly things that stick into your skin, yep. you have to pretty much have a very accurate and exact shot on that. It's not as easy as it looks just to shoot someone with a taser and knock them down. If they're moving. If they're moving or if they have a thick jacket on or something to that effect. Okay. So the taser doesn't work. They're fighting. They're wrestling on the ground. The victim was going for the taser and the officer, and this is on video, the officer was on top and the officer shot him and killed him. Yes. And after an investigation, they decided to charge the officer with, I think it's murder two, not murder one, but it's still a murder charge. That's where it stands right now. So it's not like the gun went off accidentally. It's not like they were wrestling for the gun. It was like one they, guy had Allegedly, it. they weren't wrestling for the gun. They were allegedly wrestling for the taser. Now, tasers, since 2001, 500 people have died as a result of being tasered. Now, some people, you tase someone and they're on a wall or they're standing on something high. If you tase them, they're going to fall dead weight. They could have died that way. You tase someone who's wet, or you tase someone who has alcohol on them, 
on their body or on their hands, that taser can ignite that substance. Oh. So not everyone is the shock of the taser because it, it it is an electric shock. Some people absolutely died from that, from the electric shock that you get from a taser, especially if you have a hot condition, a pacemaker or yeah. something like that. If you're elderly or if you're really, really young, you're going to die from that. But many others are as a result of when they got tased, how they fell to the ground or where they fell. Okay. So, but yeah, is a taser a deadly weapon? No, it's it's a weapon that's going to incapacitate you. However, there are rare instances where it has killed someone. Well, let me ask you this. Yes. Am I correct to say that if an officer pulls out a taser and uses the taser on you and it doesn't work, as it sometimes doesn't, am I correct to say that a shooting is the next thing? It all depends. I mean, is he tasing him because he's trying to run away? Is he tasing him because he has a knife on him? Then yes, obviously a knife and a taser. If a taser doesn't work, the next level of of defense or deadly force would would be a weapon, Mm -hmm. a gun. Yep. Every scenario would be different. This scenario, this is a tough scenario because the guy didn't have a weapon on him. Yeah. He was drunk, but that's how you can be drunk. Right. He was resisting with the cop. People resist all the time. Cops don't get killed from resisting. But if the cop was in fear that he was going to get his taser, then tase the cop. Now the cop is incapacitated. Is the guy going to now continue to run away? Or is he going to go to the next step and grab his gun and shoot him? Right. Now we had a cop outside of Boston a few years ago on a Sunday morning or was dealing with an individual, the guy picked up a rock and he killed the officer with a rock, a large rock. Yeah. So a rock can be a... Absolutely, it's a deadly yeah. weapon. Yeah. Is it a rock the size of a football that's a deadly weapon? Or is it the rock the size of a baseball that's a deadly weapon? All these little scenarios that you throw in there, all these little variables that you throw in there, now you start giving the cop either more justification or less justification to use deadly force. Yeah. So this one's going to be an argument of... He was in fear for his life because he thought he was going to be tased. And ultimately, if he's tased, he might be shot with his own handgun. Versus this guy pissed him off, evaded arrest. Yeah, that's always always a scenario. And and the guy lost his cool and just shot him in the head. Well, versus my response to that, Dave, I wouldn't even have pulled the car over. I would have just kept on going. I'm going to Dunkin' Donuts. I got to pick up for the station. (laughs) I ain't stopping. Unregistered stolen car. That's nice. Keep going, brother. <laughs> I don't know. I, let me ask you this question. I mean, there are there are rules about car chases that people don't, that cops don't engage in car chases if it presents a danger to there, other people. There's a lot of jurisdictions that are going to, we don't chase cars for a person who is unlicensed, unregistered motor vehicles, faulty inspection stickers. Jurisdictions are going to that because they've found that as a result of car chases and foot chases for very minor civil infractions, because an unregistered motor vehicle technically is a civil infraction. Right. You're going to chase the guy down the street, possibly cause an accident, then he gets out of the car, then you fight with him, you tussle with him, and worst case scenario like we have here, someone's dead. Over what? Yeah. Over a car chase or a car stop that was kind of minor at the onset, and then it just escalated to something like this. So a lot of jurisdictions, and I think it's, uh, in most cases, or in a lot of cases, I think it's a good idea. I mean, obviously stolen cars, you would chase that. Obviously a hit and run where someone was injured, you would chase that. Uh, a potentially drugged out driver or, or someone who might be drunk, you would probably try to stop that before they hit someone. Yep. But just minor civil infractions, maybe a stop sign violation or a, or a mark lane violation. Because like I said, a lot of departments have escalated to the point where cops have been killed and people have been killed over minor stuff initially, yeah. initially minor. So that's why they want to stop stuff like that. So this guy had three outstanding warrants. Autops revealed his blood alcohol concentration was more than three times the legal limit. That's pretty high. Well, yours right now is about one. You're looking good to me. <laughs> <laughs> the only way I'd look good to you would be if your uh, your alcohol uh, blood alcohol content was high. They don't say what the three outstanding warrants were for. So, no, I, I didn't see that. I mean, they, they could be somewhere out there, but I didn't happen to yeah. see them. I mean, this could be a really bad dude who got pulled over, career criminal. He has a criminal and the, history. And the guy thinks he's, yeah, but there are criminal histories and criminal histories. Yeah. Am I right? But yeah, so he's a bad guy. He's probably, I don't know if he's a big guy or a small guy. He didn't look that big. I mean, the cop okay. was about, he looked kind of wiry like me. The guy didn't look that big. Didn't say how big he was, but it didn't look, he, he wasn't like a, a menacing right. brute. It's a tough call. It's a tough uh, result. 
Why do you think that he's being charged with second degree murder? Given the circumstances. Well, I think obviously it's political. Obviously, I think if you look at this department in Grand Rapids, they've had some instances in the past where the cops have been accused of being heavy handed, you know, handcuffing an 11 or 12 year old girl and on certain things. And I think they have a history over there in Grand Rapids. And Grand okay. Rapids, Michigan is not a nice place, Dave. You're not sightseeing in Grand Rapids, Dave, on a Friday night, to be honest with you. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. So I think the community demanded something. I think the politicians demanded something, and I think that the district attorney, the criminal justice agencies of that area, were probably pressured. And I think if you if you look at the video, I think you could look at it 50-50. I think police officers might look at it as though he, he could have been in fear for his life, and he used deadly force because he was afraid. Yep. But from the other perspective, you could look at it and say, wow, what's he doing? It was, they were just wrestling with each other. He didn't have to shoot him in the head. But it, it's I, hard to, it's hard to Monday morning quarterback those. To, to my mind, it seems like, why would anybody... Cop tells me to stop, I stop. Now, criminals usually don't stop. Criminals don't stop. But if you fight with a cop, why wouldn't you just... Why wouldn't that mean you're taking your chances with being shot and killed? If you fight with a cop and it's a... Donnie Brook. Yeah. Punches are being thrown. People are wrestling. Whether you go for their gun or you just grab him around the waist and he thinks you're going for his gun. Yeah. That situation just went from a little tussle to a deadly force situation because if the cop thinks he's going for his gun, then that cop is going to grab his own gun if he can and he's going to shoot you because you've already shown that cop you're trying to grab his gun. Yep. Are you going to wait till he grabs it and then yeah. try to grab it back? Well, this is the th- yeah, this is the thing with all these cases. I mean, not all these cases, but, the, you know. A lot of cases that go bad, a lot of times it's when the person who is possibly either deceased or arrested or seriously harmed has initiated, has aggressed yeah. toward a cop. You have to understand a thing about law enforcement. Cops have guns on them. Yeah. There's always a gun in the situation. That's what I'm always aware of. And there's of. a gun in a car. And there are weapons there. Yeah. So if a cop allows himself to be incapacitated, yeah. his gun can be taken from him. His gun can be taken from his cruiser. Yeah. And a lot more other people, innocent people, can be harmed. So that's in the cop's mind usually all the time. But then again, Dave, like you alluded to early, is the cop just a nitwit? Did he overreact? Right. Is he criminally liable for what he did. The information that we have here, it, it's again, it's that whole it's the whole argument about the stand your ground. You know, can you well can you run out the back door? Can you leave your children behind with the murderer? Oh absolutely and, and get out the back door. Well then you Good can't luck, shoot kids. Them. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's uh, to my mind it seems like if you're if you're if a cop if somebody is fighting with a cop and trying to evade arrest and trying to take a weapon of his, no matter what the weapon is. I mean, the, let's say I they take your billy club and I hit you with a billy club. That hurts, Dave. It, I bet it does. I bet you've been <laughs> pepper hit with spray. It a lot. You can be pepper spray. Pepper spray. Yeah, any of that, and then it, it leaves you in a situation where you are incapacitated. You can't defend yourself. And if you can't defend, and if a cop can't defend himself, did he have control of the guy on the ground? From what you saw, it looked like. Well, I mean, it looked like it. It looked like at the time of the shooting that he was on top of the guy. Did he have yeah. control? That's a, but being on top of the guy yeah. and having control two different things. Well, if you watch, if you watch the UFC, Dave Ultimate Fight Championship, yep. the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guys will tell you just because you're on top doesn't mean doesn't anything. mean you doesn't well, listen, mean nothing means I've seen, nothing. I've seen street fights <laughs> where the guy on the bottom is on top. Yeah. Soon enough, could the cop have shot him in the shoulder? That does seem to be a case where if you can, if you can get your gun out to shoot somebody in the face, you might as well shoot him in the shoulder, yeah. and that way you won't go to jail. Having said that, I also say sometimes stuff happens in the blink of an eye. And you know the question that the question is: Is it anger or is it the need for self protection? I, I don't know. How, I don't. Yeah. I don't know what to say on this one. I don't know what the. I don't know where the where the line is. I mean, you've seen the video. I haven't seen the video. All right, this has been uh, Inside the Line. I'm Dave Radigan. That's Dale Lawrence. Uh, Inside the Line: Real Stories by Real Cops. Like us, share us, tell us what you think. Send us an email and say, No, no, you guys are way too easy on cops, or you two are way too tough on cops. Send it to Real Stories by Real Cops at gmail.com. Thanks, everybody.